So, you know, you touched on some great things in that presentation and you gave us a really good overview of blockchain and Horizon as well. Um, but again, could you just kind of, you know, make sure that I got this right? Can you tell us again what Horizon is specifically in the context of blockchain and why it's important as well? Thank you for that. I, I was acting more like professor and talking about just the, the, the general tech. I should act more like a CEO and actually tell you about, <laughs> about our product. Uh, so Horizon, actually, it's uh, our, our new way of thinking of the project is we're, we're the blockchain for value. And, and what I mean here with value is if you have something valuable, like your digital identity or say yeah. a gold futures contract or a real estate, um, your piece of a real estate parcel that you've tokenized and you want to make you know, high, highly certain you, you want to be sure that this is not going to be stolen and that mm. or compromised or uh, the system hacked, you use Horizon. And, and Horizon, the reason why we make the strong claim that we're the most secure blockchain system in the world, it's really a six part claim. I know we, we should probably say five part because it, it's just five looks nicer aesthetically than yeah. six. But really, <laughs> like our architecture, we, we have an interoperability protocol called Zendu. And Zendu is a sidechain system. So we have a core blockchain, like I said, and we have all of these other, uh, we have an SDK that allows anyone to launch their own proof of stake blockchain. It's immediately interoperable with, with the entire network. Um, and that interoperability protocol is the consensus for your sidechain is enforced with something called a zero knowledge circuit. And basically, mm -hmm. for anyone that's familiar with zero knowledge cryptography, there's a class of that called SNARKs or a product called SNARKs. It's, uh, uh, if I can get the acronym right, <laughs> succinct, <laughs> non-interactive argument of knowledge. It's basically a proof. Nice. Uh, and, and it's a proof that enforces consensus. So if you broadcast a transaction on the side chain, you have a, a, a hardwired circuit that makes sure, that does a check that what you just broadcast is actually valid and conforms to the rules of the game. And then we have a proof of stake system, like I said, that um, you, you have a whole bunch of workers called forgers. They're the miners of a proof of stake system. And they 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 add Zen to this the side chain for the right to to win the blocks. Um, so if you want to uh, steal someone's money in the system, um, mm. you have to break the snark circuit. You have to uh, hijack the stake majority stake in the system. So you have to put more Zen in than every, anyone else in the world uh, to the system. And then the certificate, the snark certificate, gets broadcast back to the main blockchain. And the main blockchain, this this proof of work blockchain. Uh, we have over 40,000 nodes validating that the certificate that was broadcast back is valid. And these 40,000 nodes now are operating on a proof of work blockchain. So you have to now subvert the entire proof of work blockchain, which means you need to add more yeah. hardware to mine to, to, to you know, solve this problem that then more than half of the people in the world that are part of the network. And in the software itself that people run, um, we have embedded in there um, additional hurdles um, so that people can't perform what's called a 51% attack, like try to reorder mm -hmm. the blockchain. Uh, and we also have um, uh, TLS and SSL that does node-to-node -node encryption for additional security. So it, you know, really, what, what is Horizon? Horizon is a yeah. blockchain system that makes it easy for people to launch a blockchain that is really designed to do things that are, are really high value for people within the blockchain context. Hopefully that, awesome. that's a mouthful. I, I, the, the simple answer is Horizon is the blockchain for value. Yeah, that sounds good. It sounds really exciting, actually. Like this is definitely kind of you know the future of where things are going to go, right? Mm -hmm. And I love what you say as well about this being disruptive. Anything that disrupts stuff, I think, is awesome. Really, really cutting edge. Um, we have a lot of young developers, students, people at the beginning of their careers in our audience today, following along, um, which is really exciting. You know, that's exactly what this stuff is all about. Uh, so, do you think kind of young developers should care about blockchain and why? Absolutely, young anyone should care about blockchain. In fact, so my students. Uh, I was teaching a, on, an honors program course at, at the finance school or finance for the finance department at uh, the University of South Carolina. And mm -hmm. even for finance students, and these these were like you know top tier you know, students, honor students. They you know many of them were also like dual ma majors in computer science. They, they were all programming savvy, but still finance students. And for them even, and especially for developers, uh, you have to pay attention to what's going on because, like I said, economically speaking, you know. Many industries that, that exist today will be entirely disrupted by this technology, and many more will be at least be impacted. And no one knows how to do it. So if you go to the old, like old school workforce, like people my age, uh, you know, I, I'm 40 years old now. Go to people my age, and then you know, God forbid, older, say someone who's 45, 50 years old. 
they, most people don't have no idea what this technology is. They, they have no, maybe they've heard of Bitcoin, but they have no idea how it works. And every company wants to use it because every mm -hmm. company knows that this is really important. There's one statistic I, I read recently, something like 85% of Fortune 500 companies, like the 500 largest companies by market cap in the US, 85% of them have already uh, deployed some blockchain system to do something. So mm -hmm. guarantee every single one of them is looking at the technology and none of them have you know, uh, you know, actual talent and skills in-house today to do this, mm. uh, this work. So for young students, this is your best ticket to getting a job when you graduate, mm. is to say that you, you have experience. And by the way, if, if your university, if you're going to university, doesn't have a course on this, there are actually today many courses available on open courseware, stuff like edX, um, there's uh, Coursera, uh, these are uh, open, free environments that have uh, college courses, videos, like an entire course available for free online. And now there are thousands of courses available. There are at least dozens of blockchain cryptocurrency courses available now. So you can go and start learning now. You can get certificates with this stuff that, that proves that you know how to do it. But I'll tell you the biggest proof, if you're a developer, the yeah. biggest proof that you can show me that you know what you're doing is if you've contributed to an open source repository. So guys, Come contribute to the Horizon Open Source Repository with HDE, and you will be able to show any any employer in the future that you have credentials, you have contributed to a live open source public blockchain. That's 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 really good advice, actually. Uh, so it's interesting what you said. You know, like eighty five percent of Fortune five hundred companies have you know deployed blockchain in some way, and they're kind of aware that this is you know where the technology is going. Would you say there's kind of a skill shortage at the minute of of developers who are skilled in blockchain? Big time. And I can tell you personally, we're trying to hire as fast as we can developers, mm. and it's really hard. Um, so the type of developer that we're trying to hire, and, and there's a whole, so the stack in our industry, it comprises a lot of things. I'll just start with Bitcoin, the Bitcoin stack, or maybe, maybe the, the Horizon stack. The core blockchain is a C++ based blockchain. So uh, if you're not a C, C++ uh, programmer, it's gonna be hard to contribute to the, you know, the core Bitcoin or Horizon the core protocol. Uh, from there, though, um, you know, in our sidechain system, our sidechains are written in Scala, a functional programming language, with Java wrappers. So you can actually take our SDK and program Java uh, logic for you know, your application with our SDK. There are many more Java developers in the world than Scala developers and you know, C, yeah. C++ plus plus developers. Um, so there, there is a shortage there. And then you get into like uh, the really es esoteric stuff. Like we're we're uh, mm. a zero knowledge cryptography heavy company uh, because we, we write circuits. We write zero knowledge circuits uh, for a living. This is what we do. That's a core of our, our competitive advantage. And there there are not that many cryptographic engineers uh, that can uh, not that many cryptographic engineers out there that mm. we can grab to, to code our circuit. Um, so there is this hierarchy, and then you've got the applications, you know, like being able to like grab an SDK and write applications. You can go to the Ethereum network for smart contracts with their Solidity programming language. Uh, there's a lot out there, and there's such a deficiency of this type of talent out there in the labor force. That's that's really interesting, and it's, it's, it's like you say, we have so many of these young developers in our audience in the minute. Um, blockchain is clearly you know a very good avenue to go down in terms of developing their skills. Um, <laughs> Looks like John here behind the scenes is, is experimenting with our stream. Uh, so I'd love to talk a little bit more about you and your background. You know, like you, we're talking about students, people at the beginning of their career. You yourself were a student a, a few years ago, like you said. Uh, can you tell us how you were initially introduced to blockchain? Uh, yeah, so there was a, a slash dot article. So for any of you techies out there, slash dot is, slash dot is a great uh, way to get news, uh, like tech news. Uh, and, and there was an article I believe in 2012 they caught my attention on Bitcoin. And again, because of my, you say, what do you call this political or ideological, um, you know, uh, background of being a libertarian, of just, you know, advocating freedom, that's yeah. what, you know, what libertarians yeah. do, um, for better or worse, by the way. Uh, Bitcoin was really big in the libertarian uh, community early on. And, and that's why I, I was just positioned in like uh, Dunlock in the right place to at least be introduced mm. to the technology. I paid attention. I loved it, and you know, I dove right in. Uh, maybe not fast enough. I, I wish I had do dove in like harder in, in uh, 2012. The first thing that I did in, in uh, cryptocurrency with Bitcoin was I offered my my tutoring services. Anyone that wants to learn physics or math, I'll tutor. You pay me in Bitcoin. 
Well, no one paid me in Bitcoin to, to tutor yeah. them. Yeah, so uh, maybe I'm not the best tutor. Uh, but then the way I, I actually got involved, like I said, I started giving seminars in Afghanistan to teach uh, Afghans about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and how they can do things like open wallets and actually obtain obtain Bitcoin. Then when I went and I started studying um, this academically, doing research, actually my my uh, first research paper, which is now in full disclosure, guys, I'm a PhD candidate. It means I, I need to defend my dissertation. So I'm a student like you guys. Uh, I need to defend my dissertation. I, I kind of stepped away for the last few years because of run, running this project. Um, but my, my dissertation is based on looking at cross country differences in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency prices and trying to explain why do these cryptocurrencies trade at such drastically different prices mm -hmm. across countries? Because you would think that you would have professional arbitrageurs or traders around the world. They would, if Bitcoin's you know, selling really high in one market, they would buy it in another market really cheaply and sell it in the high market and yeah. capture that arbitrage profit. It doesn't happen. Like you have markets around the world that are, have persistently high or different premiums for cryptocurrencies and my dissertation is about explaining the differences and why they, why they persist. Hint, uh, spoiler alert, it really comes down to governance. And for countries mm -hmm. that are poorly governed, people are willing to pay a high premium to get into this kind of peer to peer financial world. Um, so I, I, while I was a student, I started getting involved entrepreneurially in uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies by joining the startups and actually participating in, in open source parts of projects. And then in 2017, launched um, Zencash, is what we were called back in 2017, privacy coin that has turned into Horizon today, which is really this much broader uh, application platform. That's really great to hear. So you've been doing blockchain for a few years now. How did you kind of start learning about blockchain then? And how would a young developer now go out and learn about blockchain? So there are a whole bunch of tools. I mean, if you want to go down the route of uh, you're doing things like with major league hacking is, is a great first step, right? You're being introduced yep. to, to the tech. You're going to have a simple example, like program a, ga a game and you can start interacting with like uh, RPC methods in a wallet using you know, basic, basic uh, command line tools. That's great. Um, if you want to get a little bit deeper, there's actually a book that I recommended to my students. Maybe it's a little outdated today. I'm not sure because I'm getting old, but uh, it's called uh, Mastering Bitcoin is by Andreas Antonopoulos, who's one of the, the earliest prolific speakers in the, in the Bitcoin world. It's called Mastering Bitcoin. It's actually, uh, there's a whole open source GitHub repository with all of the, the chapters. You don't have to pay anything for the book, but if you, want, if you want it in simple form, you can order it on Amazon or wherever you get a book. And it's great because it actually has uh, coding examples. You can go through the book and you'll learn everything about the, the consensus for Bitcoin. You'll learn about uh, how the network stack works and how nodes communicate with each other. There'll be programming examples. You'll, you'll have some programming examples with command line, like doing like SHA-256 operations. Um, so it's, it's a really cool book to like int introduce you to it. And then, like I said, at the end of the day, you want to start participating in, in a project. So the, the best thing for young developers to do is to join an open source community like Horizon. And, and I recommend us because, I mean, you can probably tell from me now, like we're a very welcoming open group. Like yeah. our whole goal yeah. is to make the world a better place. So there are many toxic public blockchain projects out there. I won't name mm -hmm. names where, you know, people are, are actually just, you know, a-holes. They, they're totally rude to each other. You have yeah. the hierarchies there where you come in, you'll have some like dominant engineers that try to like show you how stupid you are. Mm. That's not us at all. We, we want you to come in. We want to, you know, we want you to grow with us and we just want you to participate. So the, the, the best thing you could do is join an open source community. Join the community. Don't even get daunted yet by, by the code base. Join the community. Just become familiar with the project. Participate in the conversation about where the community should go because a good open source project like Horizon is community based and the community drives the development. The community tells us what they want. The community tells us where we're going over the time. The community tells us where our strategy ought to be. Um, come participate. Just, just join the conversation. Then, if you're, if you're a developer, uh, check out HDE, again, hde.horizon.io, and find a task. Basically, there's a whole bunch of tasks. It, for us, it's in beta. We're going to add a bunch more tasks, but they're easy tasks. Take an easy task, try it out, work on it, add something to our GitHub repository that proves that you've actually contributed to the open source project and stay with it. Keep keep solving tasks over time. Keep doing work. Earn Zen. You know, collect your Zen uh, for doing work. Then you could do different things like setting up a node so you can participate in running our infrastructure, right? And then you can get some experience there by keeping a wallet 
always up on your uh, server. So mm. you, you'll get some server experience. You'll learn how to do the wallet operations. Uh, you'll learn, you know, some like how to Dockerize your node if you want to replicate it. Right? There, there's a whole learning path here that really, literally, starts by come and join the community, join Discord, and chat with us. That's awesome. And those communities are really, really important. And I think uh, just got the URL here. You said that was hde.horizon.io. Is that right, Rob? Correct. That's correct. So this is a great resource to go to. Make sure you head to this one. And like Rob was saying, the community is, is really, really important to you know, just growing as a developer in general. And it sounds like blockchain community and Horizon community is really, really awesome. Uh, one thing I did want to ask you about, and I know this will be relevant as well to uh, the, the students and young developers follow along with this. So you said yourself, you're still a student, you're finishing your PhD. Uh, you're also a co-founder of Horizon, so you definitely keep yourself busy. Uh, how do you balance all these different commitments you have? How do you manage your time? And I have a little, a little baby. She's 19 months, turned 20 months, and she's wow. amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So it's, you know, trying to teach her math at this early age is a little challenging, but hey, we, yeah. we, we do it with crayons that erase in the bathroom tiles, and it's fun. Um, but awesome. I'm, for me, it's uh, my life hack, the way I do things is I, I'm, uh, I'm a homebody, and I structure my days quite, you know, I would say, in some sense, rigid, in, in, in the sense that I, I just don't like to be bored, and, and I'm never bored. There's always something to do, and I'll just walk you through my day, and this is just me. Not, not everyone needs to do this. I live in Puerto Rico, and I start my day. I wake up, you know, with the baby, with the baby kicking me, and, and we get up, uh, we play with her for a little bit, and then she, you know, goes and, and spends some time with her nanny. Then I go for a walk on the beach with my wife. We start the day, clear our minds with some physical activity, some sunshine, and just beautiful nature. Uh, then I come back, have some coffee. Maybe I'll read, uh, you know, some journal that, that I have available while I'm drinking coffee, and then just dive right into work. The way you, you should handle work professionally is make sure that you understand what the, the two or three most important things you have to do in the day are. It, you should start your day and think intentionally, what are those two or three things that are the most important things for you to do today? And dive right in. Don't procrastinate, nail those few important things, and then the rest of the day can be a bit of a filler where you could just you know, mechanically go through tasks, but there, everyone has different motivations, and I forgot the you know the MBA courses I took on how certain people are motivated to work. But you know, one motivation style is, is called a, like a, com a sense of accomplishment, where people like to have a checklist and check off the things they're doing. Well, if you're not rank ordering that checklist based on priority, you're wasting your time, and you're going to find yourself really stressed. Uh, so this is the way I do it. I carve out time on weekends for my PhD, um, and you know, it's during when I'm when I'm doing work, I make sure that I'm intensely focusing on the work. That's another thing is. In an in, in age of Zoom and COVID, where we're all just doing things remotely, it's way too easy to multitask. And multitasking, I think, is, you know, sometimes you can say it's efficient in, in some way, but like, why multitask? If you're doing something that doesn't require your full attention, close it out. Focus on the thing that actually requires your full attention. So this is the way that, that I do it. I also sprinkle some physical fitness, a lot of walking in the day. Uh, I like to walk, you know, especially after eating. So not to get into too <laughs> personal in my life, but, you know, it, it keeps the, you know, like if you're balancing, trying to juggle a lot of things in life that are extremely stressful, like trying to you know, run a, a couple companies and, and do a PhD and have a baby, uh, you have to carve time intentionally for yourself to de-stress. And whatever that is for you, maybe it's reading, maybe it's going for a walk. Um, you know, I try to do, try to do both. Yeah, and I think that's really good advice you give, right? That applies, you know, you say that's for work, but that applies if you're studying, you know, if you're doing a PhD or you're just trying to improve yourself in some way, right? It's really important to be able to balance those things. And I love what you said about making sure you just kind of nail a couple of the critical things as well. Exactly. Um, it's a good way to get your motivation up and feel good about yourself, I would think. Uh, we've got a question here in the Twitch chat from YashN15, who says, how do we join a community like Horizon? Awesome question, and please take me up on this. Go to horizon.io, and you'll there. You, it's a one-stop shop for everything. But really, what you want to do is navigate all the way down to the bottom of the screen and find the, the little Discord icon and Discord link. Click that Discord link, and it's going to send. It, it automatically loads an invite to our Discord server. Join Discord. That's the best way to do it. We also have a Telegram channel. Uh, you can find our, our Telegram channel there, but uh, you know, Telegram has a different community flavor than the Discord channel uh, or Discord uh, you know, um, uh, server that we have running. I recommend Discord, especially if you're a developer. That's where we have all of the developer activity. 
Good, good advice. Discord is definitely the way to go. Good place to find communities. Uh, looks like we have time for just a couple more questions here. And if you are following along, don't forget you can post your questions in the Twitch chat or the YouTube chat on the side. We will address those if we have time. Uh, another question here for you, though, Rob. What advice would you give to our young developers? Oh man. Okay. Uh, you know the the first thing again. I'm going to repeat it because it's so important. Join an open source community like Horizon. Join the Horizon community. And I can tell you, if you join us, we're so much smaller than Bitcoin, so you can have an impact right away. Um, if you join the Bitcoin community, you'll be one of millions or tens of millions of people, and they have very strong and opinionated engineers uh, that actually have a very, you know, they call them, it's decentralized in a way, but they also have kind of a hierarchy because I've been around for a while. If you join ours, uh, it, it's, more flat because we're relatively new and just very egalitarian. And you'll be able to contribute right away. That's one thing. Then contribute to the open source repositories. That's the other one. So complete tasks on HDE. And if you don't see a task there, suggest one. We'll, we'll add a task for you and add a bounty for you because we just want you to get started, right? We want developers to come in and just get started with us. We want you to be part of the community. We want to give you Zen to participate. Mm. Um, now, academically, there are skills that you have to have. If you want to be a programmer in this world, you have to carve out a niche for yourself. So obviously, like your your life cycle as a professional software developer has different phases. But early on, you want the foundation. So you want computer science. You want like broad software development basics. You want to learn development, you know, methods, um, and you, you want to learn broad, uh, important programming languages like either C, C++. Go, um, you know, Python. Obviously, I mean, that's so. I'm not, I'm not a software engineer, but I'm a Python developer. Um, so, uh, Python is something that every developer needs to know. Uh, Java, really, whatever your flavor is that you want to do, you need to get in there. And then, if you really want to specialize, you can carve out a niche. So, if you want to, like, I'll, I'll just throw something tantalizing out there for really the, you know, the the really over like over performers in, in the audience. If you want to check out a zero knowledge cryptographic library that, that we put together, it's called Ginger Lib. Come to our GitHub. If you go to GitHub and you type into GitHub Horizon, you'll find our, our GitHub link. And Robbie, I don't know if you have the link, but um, you know, we could always you know, link them to our GitHub. You can always get to it from the Horizon.io anyway. Um, check out Ginger Lib. Ginger Lib is our extremely sophisticated you know, zero knowledge based cryptographic library. And it, it you know, if you want to contribute, you could be a Rust developer for one, so you can learn Rust. That's that's a really cool, uh, you know, hot language right now to learn. Uh, and it really depends where you want to be. If you want to be on the front end, you know, of, of this world, um, you can get into like, you know, React. Um, you know, you can go Node.js. You can go different routes depending on what you want to do. Uh, and you just really need to think for yourself. But early on, I recommend more general, and then as you go through your career, get more specific. That's some really good advice. And we've got that URL on the screen there as well for Dingerlib. I presume, Rob, this is cool. the, uh, the right yeah, one. Exactly. Um, we are coming to a close there, but can you tell us, Rob, because you're a CEO, a co-founder, you're doing very, very well for yourself. How can our audience follow you online? Yeah, I mean, uh, my, my main public um, you know, forum where, where I, I speak to the world you know, in my, in my little way uh, is on Twitter. So Rob Viglion, at Rob Viglion at, um, on Twitter is how you'll find me. And you know, I I, uh, I love you know, engage me there and, and or engage me on our Discord. Uh, I'm actually uh, Finpunk is my handle on, on uh, Discord. Uh, yep, that's me on uh, on Twitter and on Discord. You could find me as Finpunk. I mean, I'm always chatting. If you just scroll through any any of the feeds, you'll you'll find me on there. Um, and happy to chat with you there. Happy to chat with anyone on, on Telegram as well. If you join our our community channel, so really, it's uh, it, it, guys. This project is not about me. We have an amazing team and an amazing community. In fact, we're, we're launching something right now called Horizon Community Council. Uh, so we want the community to be more empowered. This isn't, you know, I, I'm a CEO, but not of the, the open source blockchain. I'm a CEO of Horizon Labs, which is a company, the VC backed company. Uh, I'm, I'm the team lead for the, you know, the Zen Blockchain Foundation, which is a nonprofit that, that does stuff in, for the Horizon community. But, but really, it's a community project. And, there are many opportunities to participate. And ultimately over time, like some of the best employees that we have came from the community. And if you prove yourself in the community, there's no better way 
Like you can send me your CV today and you could have an amazing CV and yeah, maybe it'll get my attention and we'll get you through the interviews uh, process. But if you go on and actually contribute on our, our GitHub and you're participating, you show that you're an active, intelligent, you know, committed community member, you know, actually interested in, in the project being successful, you're top of the top of the queue when it comes to us hiring. And that's where I, I would much rather hire you know, an amazing developer from our community than a stranger who really doesn't care about our project. Brilliant. That was some really, really good advice. Rob, thank you so much for speaking with me. I have really, really enjoyed it. I know our audience have also really enjoyed listening to what you've got to say uh, about your own story and your own journey and Horizon as well. Some really, really fantastic stuff. Mm -hmm.